Bojo's talking about lifting lockdown in a few weeks for picnics and stuff. With Thunderlips in there, with Hulk Hogan as the heavyweight uh, wrestler, Brilliant Clubber Lang as Mr. T. Talking points of a generation. You had World War II, you've got the moon landing, a talking point of a generation. Music. Music is a really good way to get going. In the Back in my day, I had to stay inside for 12 months. It was terrible. Now it's more, what can I do beside that that can develop me? Well, it's inspiration for me is like, that's like, that's like a lifetime. Inspiration Nation, hello. Welcome back to another week on the podcast, episode 101. You may recognise that my voice is, again, not the dulcet tones of Mr Kemp. Um, his sabbatical reigns for another another week. His 100 week, 100, his sabbatical for his 100 week uh, service level to the podcast has granted him a second week off. Um, hope he's good. Checked in with him earlier. Um, he, he seems good. Joe says you've spoken to him. Um, you know, as Joe always says, our, our love goes out to him. Uh, as I'm sure the love of the the nation does as well. But I'm joined today, as always, with Joe Neuer. How are you doing, Joe? I'm good, Ryan. Always good, yeah, and you say, yeah, uh, very good. And how good. are you? How I'm are good. you? I'm good. Um, it's Tuesday, the snow's all melted outside. It looks like we might be starting to hit a bit of spring in the next couple of weeks. So vaccines are rolling out. Bojo's talking about lifting lockdown in a few weeks for picnics and stuff. We're on the move. Like 2021 is the year. Get me back to the know. pub. I didn't know he was lifting the old, uh, lifting the old. Uh... He said they're, they're hoping to, to to give us some leeway around um, around. Uh, I thought it was March the eighth. I may not be fully up to date with the government's formal advice, but March the eighth is uh, the first time, the first day that considering release lowering a little bit of restriction you can go for picnics in the park and stuff um but every step we take is another step back to uh back to normality back to normal life but yeah i'm good i'm good ready ready for another week incredible isn't it to think um you know we you know we've been doing this what podcast now uh for a while hey will and rise join hey uh, hey how you doing there Marty Gerbers as well. He's back back for another week on the podcast. Let these people are joining. Thanks, guys, for joining. Um, yes, yeah, amazing to think. And uh, I say before we move on, I say yeah, hi to Lee. Um, you know, look forward to seeing you, hearing you next week, Lee. Uh, but yes, yeah, so it's amazing. I think these these podcasts will be like a segue into when we listen back post pandemic. We had a sort of little little time capsule to say, no, oh, in there. Oh, I don't want to think about anything anything during pandemic as soon as it's post pandemic that's it life starts again you can look back 10 years time do you remember those that show 101 well it'll be it'll it'll be my grandparents talking about the second world war and i'm not comparing the two things because they're majorly different but as in talking points of a generation you had world war ii you've got the moon landing a talking point of a generation you've got i don't know what happened in the 80s what happened in the 80s Maggie Thatcher closing the coal mines in the 80s. That was a talking point of a generation. And here we are. We're 2020 and there was a global pandemic. Um, that'll be our talking point of our, of our generation, I think. Well, I'll tell you what, we'll be, we'll be, we'll be, be telling our, our grand, grandkids in, well, for you, Joe, probably a bit short of time, but maybe for me in the next 40, 50 years that, that um, back in my day, I had to stay inside for 12 months. It was terrible. What I'll be saying to people. Oh yeah, the pandemic. You know, this one. I lived in the eighties. Eighties was crazy. That, that was that was uh, that was my bag. The eighties. So yeah, lots of things happened in the eighties. Like you said, Margaret Thatcher, all that sort of stuff. Yuppies back in the eighties as well. All that sort of Never stuff. Never heard of those. Yeah, so you hadn't, but you've missed out there. Like, <laughs> <maybe. laughs> yes, you could find us on uh, Twitter and Instagram at Listen to In. Uh, listen, T O I N. Always have to spell it out. I can't just say it. You have to spell it out as well. Uh, Joe is at Jose Neuer on pretty much all of your social medias. You just type in Jose Neuer and uh, Joe's smiley face will pop up at you. Um, oh, but yeah, what is what is our subject this week, Joe? So, 
what does inspiration mean to you? What does inspiration mean to you? So it's what it's about. So, you know, what inspires you? What gets you going? You know, what, what is it that, that really sort of makes you tick, I suppose? You know, and how do you sustain inspiration? I mean, that's really what I'd like to know from you guys. And, or you guys, you, Ryan, in fact. Um, so I can just start with me. Um, so inspiration, and if you, if you listen to the podcasts, this podcast, you'll know the inspiration is my top, top value. I have to feel inspired doing things. If there's if it's no meaning or purpose, I don't feel inspired, it's not going to last very long. Um, you know, that's why, you know, I have the drive to do these types of things and these types of conversations, because I think these conversations are important. So as we're talking about Inspiration Nation podcast, I think it's quite nice to have a total episode thinking about inspiration. And I talked before, I think I talked about like, inspirational films. In fact, even before we came on air, Ryan and I were sort of talking a little bit. We do a little preamble, don't we? And if you've mm. been listening and following, you know, the podcast, you'll know that we have a little pre preamble um, before we come on. And then usually uh, Ryan, Lee and myself, we have a little chat. It's a lot, it's a lot of little meeting, nice, nice meeting that we sort of catch up with each other during the week and what's happened. But in there, we talked about, you know, things that sort of inspired us. And I just said it was really strange because Lee was talking about not long ago that he was what you rewatched all the Matrix. And Matrix is one of the films that really inspired me. And I always talk about Rocky is one of the one of the sort of franchise that inspired me. And we and Ryan and I were talking about watch films. And yes, he's, he's, he's some, Ryan actually said he, he loves Rocky 3, which I was really surprised at. I loved that film with Thunder Lips in there, with Hulk Hogan as the heavyweight uh, wrestler, Brilliant and Clubber Lang as Mr. T. Oh, classic film. In fact, that's one I've got to watch. So I've been re-watching them. So, in fact, um, just to sort of pull in a coin, there's like, what was that? Um, make a point with how to get inspired. So let me just share with you a little bit what gets me inspired. So I have a morning routine. If you, if no, if you haven't listened to the podcast before, please go back and listen. But I sort of talk about routines and how important they are. So for me to get inspired in the morning, I have a routine. I get up early. Um, I get up uh, around 5 a.m., I get up, I, I do some exercise, some really light exercise, might seem press, usually press ups at the minute. It's press ups. I sometimes go running. I haven't been running for a while. Um, I don't know why. I might have to get back into that, but I do press. I do some form of physical exercise. Then what I do is I'll meditate. Then I'll start writing my journal. Then I'll watch something inspirational. There'll be a, a channel or uh, something. Like that. But the thing I've missed, and I want to say this to you guys, it's something I've missed, and I want you guys to take this away, is music music is a really good way to get you going and, and i was listening and i think another thing i was listening to was this rocky soundtrack that gets me that feels me feel inspired right because it tails back into the day when i used to watch rocky films um and so that soundtrack is just something like a soundtrack of my life that gets me going and a lot of people when they're feeling sad or down what do they tend to do ryan when people are feeling what sort of music they put when they put feeling sad these conversations, these conversations before, before. I'm hearing myself. Uh, we've had these conversations before and um, people when they're sad will watch sad films, sad TV shows and listen to sad music because that is how they feel. They do not do the opposite and listen to positive things, um, happy music, because that is not what their brain is telling them to do. 100%. So the challenge for you, I'm sorry, you can say watching there for a minute, right? <laughs> Listening is to put something on that's going to get you moving that's going to lift you because like reinforcing that whole you know oh you know that is not going to help so it's just really making sure that you dial in something and i'll tell you what i did i put on it was the the training montage in fact i had it on youtube and it's like there's a whole training montage from rocky and it's that music and i started bobbing my head and i started getting much more into it in fact you know, it's what I'm starting to think about even before doing anything sort of like this or, you know, anything sort of in front of people actually getting to do that. And I, I've been, you know, that's something I'm going to have to try and get into my routine. But that is the sort of thing I'm looking for. So you need to think about this in your routines. What do you do? How could you get it in? So I'm going to throw the ball to you, Ryan. What inspires you? What, do, what, what, do, what is the thing that gets you going? I don't think I can drill it down to one thing. And I think the answer has changed in the last 12 months or so. Um, oh, can I stop you there? Can we say last 12 months, what did? And then post 12 months, what, what's done it? Can you break it down? 12 months ago, what inspired me 12 months ago? Um, money. 
Um, in what way did money inspire you? Yeah, the, the, the fact that it was the reason that I got out of bed and stuff. It was the reason that I went to work was to earn money. And it wasn't what I was... I, 12 months ago is too short a time. I would say 18 months to two years ago was, was my mindset. Literally probably before we started this just before we started this that was where my head was at it was i only go to work for money i don't really go for anything else i don't do much else it's you know go there to earn money to pay my bills to live my life whatever um that was all it was as time has progressed that's changed and i found that what i get the most out of things is is what what gives me the most out of things is what i should be focusing my effort into regardless because the money is going to be there as long as i'm as long as i'm in employment that money's always going to come in. There's not going to, it's not going to stop if I'm actually working. So don't worry about that. You don't have to think about that. That's, that's sorting itself out. Now it's more, what can I do beside that that can develop me and, 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 and could give me a good feeling throughout the day? What pumps me up and gets me going are a, a, a few select things. Weirdly, thinking what would Harvey Specter do from Suits? because he was cool and I like that. Um, what, would, what would Harvey Spectre do from Suits? He would, just, he would just, he would just, he would just, he would achieve the best outcome possible. He's a fictional character, but the the, the perception, the perception behind him and, and the character that was built around him was built off of his personality that you could do whatever. You could just get through it. Um, and that started people both fictional and non-fictional one of my friends that was my boss for a while um one of my friends that was boss for, for three four years good friend of mine he he inspires me because we were so alike um my role models some of which have become friends over the last few years lee being one you know when you start in a place you're given a figurehead that this is your leader this is what you do and i've always been the kind of person that's like right i'm here how do i get to there and i always thought it was a really easy regimented road obviously it isn't but he was somebody that i wanted to to model myself on kind of be a part of um and he he became a friend through work and we've ended up doing this but that hasn't changed it doesn't change the fact that he helps inspire me to do my do my job well it just that doesn't change that fact and he he knows that kind of thing we've had those conversations before um and i never have those types of con conversations with people i'm not that kind of emotional person but i've you know I, I thanked him the other week i don't know if i told you i probably told you off camera I, I, I thanked him the other week for all of the the help that he's given me indirectly and directly um but he's not the only person and neither was was my old boss i've got friends that that keep me going i've got I've got music, as you say, I've got sometimes what really gets gets me kind of pumped up and get on with the day is the fact that the quicker I got on with the day, the quicker I can get back into bed. I'm not having a good day. The quicker it will be over. I can go back to sleep. It all sorts of things. I find motivation and I find inspiration in the tiniest of things. It doesn't matter what it is. I'll find it and I'll just and sometimes it takes months to find it. Sometimes it takes weeks. Sometimes it takes days but eventually I'll find it and I'll go, right, okay, I'm in. And then I'll run with it. I don't ever get inspiration and sit on it. Once I get it, I go. And that's, yeah, that's pretty much where I'm at. So I've you talked said a lot there. Really interesting around what you said around, I'm curious to know, you said motivation and inspiration. What's the difference between, is there, if you, what's the difference in your mind between the two? Is mm -hmm. there a difference? Is not a lot, difference? not a lot. No, I think I think they're one and the same. Um, I don't know what the Google, what uh, the Google, what the dictionary would suggest is the difference between them. Inspiring someone probably is more of a mental thing, is more of the thought of something. It gives you reason to do something, whereas motivation is probably a bit more of a physical being or a physical object giving you a reason to do something. But I don't, I don't see a difference, if any personally they both yes. they both give me the the fuel to get done what i need to get done yeah i like that because i i see them a little bit differently i see motivations you said like I, I think i see motivation as something that makes you go towards it 
whereas inspiration is a bit more for me, it's more around um, a meaning, meaning and purpose and vision. Um, so when, I, when I've gone to anywhere, I always look for any, any in fact, any business I've worked for my life, I didn't really realise this, but if I've worked for a business or go to work or, or, or even team up with someone, it will be around because I find something about it that's inspiring. Like, like if, if I'm working for a business, I'll look for the inspirational leaders. Like, you like leaders because you look up to Lee, right? Sort of aspirational, I suppose, is you look for. Um, you know, I look for those inspirational people that I think, well, like, who in this business is going to be inspirational for me? Who I want to really, you know, help build something. You know, and I feel like I'm on a mission with something. That, for me, inspires me. If I'm on a mission to do something, that's going to get me to do my best work and all that. So, so I so class me up with different motivation is, is quite, can be quite short term because if you're motivated through whatever a short term reward, then once you get it, that's when the motivation dips or, you know, some people are motivated to hit a certain weight, some are motivated to earn a certain amount of money. And once you hit that, I think that's like a, a short term burst of energy. Whereas inspiration for me is like, that's like, that's like a lifetime it's a lifetime thing or a very long term thing. Of course, as we move and go into careers, we might go to different businesses, different different places. But it's like I'm looking for this. And if I find it, I'm on board. Like, and that for me is a big thing. And this is the whole reason where, you know, where inspirations come from, inspiration nationalists. We want you to feel inspired by you know doing things that fill you up. That, you know, I believe on this planet that this is one of my beliefs, Ryan. And, you can, and actually I've asked yours in a minute, but I believe people on this planet to find their purpose, what they're here to do. Um, and, and that's what I'm hoping this podcast gives people is that they'll reflect and have these deeper conversations and talk about, okay, so what am I here to do? You know, what am I on this planet to do? Am I just here to get born, go for life and die? Um, I love what David Goggins said. He said that you want to beat the chart. Now, he doesn't say there's like a big man in the sky. What he talked about, like, he talked about a bit about the afterlife, but he talks about if I go and meet my maker, he tries to imagine that when he when they look at his chart and say, oh, yeah, David Goggins, uh, born and such and such, he wants to beat that chart. He doesn't want you, God, I, didn't, I wasn't expecting you to have done that. That's what he's doing. And I think that for me is the epitome of living a great life is that you're not doing what they expected. You're going outside the things you would normally expect and you're beating the chart. I love that. I just that's inspiring for me like if, if when i get to the end of my life and you know wh whatever being maybe maybe we're in a virtual reality world i don't know but maybe there's a virtual being that goes hey we put you in this little cocoon you've woken up and what we expect you to do is this but you know what you did you actually smashed it and you did this 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 we weren't expecting to do that now that's the sort of life i want to start really stop embedding and, I, and you know i feel a bit behind the curve on that um because now I'm you know, getting on in years. But, you know, I don't think it matters when you start, as long as you start. Um, and that, for me, is where that sits. How does that sit with you, Ryan? What is your thoughts on any of that that I've said there? Um, don't know. I don't really think I've felt or thought about it in that kind of context before. Um, I feel that every person on the planet is part of life story um in the sense that wh whatever part we play some of us might be president of the united states but some of us might be i don't know a bin man or whatever we play a part in life that keeps the ball rolling and the world spinning if you want a good metaphor but everyone plays their part to keep it going um some in a good way, some in a not so good way. But there was a video of going the round, going the rounds at the minute of Tyson Fury, the boxer, you know Tyson Fury. Yeah, yeah. Is he still he, um, uh, he's one division heavyweight champ. I think he beat he the... Wilder last Is... year. But uh, Anthony Joshua's got like the other All right. four, as five belts. I think my box knowledge isn't fantastic, but I think that's right. But he did a podcast the other week or a little while ago with um, they had Mike Tyson on it. A few of them and um i can't remember specifically what he said but he was talking about um that that life is like everything you have in life is borrowed 
don't own anything because as soon as you die it, it doesn't matter it's going to go to somebody else it's going to go anywhere so whatever you have in life is borrowed so the only thing that you live for the only thing that you can ever live for are moments and memories and I, I, if you think yeah you're going to write that down now um the point being or the reason behind it is that is that everyone ha everyone lives their life for a, a certain moment some person's moment as i've mentioned might be that you're president of the united states or heavyweight champion of the world for five ten years but it might also be that you're a you're a parent to a kid a really a, you know you, you're a parent to a child that you're bringing up into the world that their moment is going to be something big you live for as a human being for those moments you don't live for anything physical because it doesn't matter you're going to die like the clothes you're wearing doesn't matter the laptop you're using doesn't matter the phone you're watching this through doesn't matter the earphones you're using to listen to this doesn't matter you're going to lose it and, I know, and that can sound quite deep and quite morbid you're going to lose it you're going to die there's no way you can look past that so the only thing you you can that was why he was talking about it because he said humans always want more you can be the richest man in the world but you're always going to want more but it doesn't matter does it because you're just going to lose it it doesn't you, you don't own anything you're just borrowing it from the world but what you do take away and what you do get to keep and what nobody can take away from you are your memories and the moments that you live in and the people that you help and however whatever way you look at it what you take away from this world is what you physically put into it in terms of the moments you create the memories you make and the time that that you're here for this is our moment this is your moment this is my moment and that's what it's here for that's it that's what he was saying and, I, and that really sat with me really well and i think um quite touching in the sense that it's a little bit hard hitting i'd say but what it does do is it it, it just kind of sets the tone that it, nothing matters apart from the memories and the moments you put in and take out of it nothing matters so if you find motivation in nothing or something or everything or inspiration in anything that's for you it's not for anybody else you know that's for you it doesn't matter if you drive a lamborghini or a, a fiat punto it, it, honestly it doesn't matter it's what it's about what i know i keep saying it but it's about what you get out and what you put in that's all it is love that i've spoken a lot here that's good i think it's really good and, and the thing is, I think we've got to be careful with it as well. So let's just pitch it a little bit. Di no, not pitch it differently. In a, in, a, in a similar way, but in a different way. So when Ryan said around, it doesn't matter, it doesn't mean like it doesn't matter. It's just like it means that you need to live your best life, right? Because it's, it, it, it's yeah, all fine. It's I, all fine. It's yeah, all I fine. Think, this I think is a whole thing about nihilism, which we've got to be very careful about, I think. Yeah, I don't, uh, I, I, I don't, I don't want anyone to think that I'm saying just don't go to work because it doesn't matter. Of course, of course, those kind of things matter, obviously, for your current current being. But anything you own or anything that you aspire on a physical level, outside of of you having it for sometimes six months, sometimes five years, whatever, it doesn't have any consequence to to your life. That like you could be sat in your deathbed and you're not going to remember some gadget you bought 35 years ago what you're going to be thinking about are the things that you've done and what you've taken out of life and what you've put into it um so when i say it doesn't matter like physical things can matter obviously but in the sense of the grand scheme of things in your life it it, it doesn't but i i i see you know that's where i'm at with it love it because the thing is when you think about it when we're born we come in with nothing that's it. And you leave with nothing. Leave with nothing. So, and what do, you know, when you speak to people of mature ages, and I'm getting to that, that age now, <laughs> Lee would have, he would have a field day if he was here right now. So, yeah, clever, Joe, clever word in, clever word in. Um, but I, when, when you speak to people you know, of that age, what, what, do you, what do you usually find, Ryan? I know I've got my answer, but I want to know what do you usually find, what they, talk, what, what they usually talk about? talk about the things that they've done talk about the memories that they have yeah and that's what you said right you said that people just talk about the things I, I speak to my mum bless her soul and she talks about a lot about the things you've done things you used to do so you do get to that point which is so so important that we have that quality of life like you know so your life does matter it's what you make in those moments have you helped so are you being a good human 
are you, you know, are you living to the best of your ability? Because when you think about, I did a blog about this actually. It's some ridiculous number. Did I quote it? Did we talk about it? I keep getting confused sometimes. When I write the blog and when I do this, I get confused. But there's some ridiculous number. So that, that we are born. Like it's a, it's an absolute miracle that we actually. Oh, are. what the odds? The odds yeah. of somebody being born? Yeah, I I don't know. I've heard the number before. I don't know it off the top of my head. It's a crazy number that we are actually miracles when we're born. And I think we tend to lose sight of that because we tend to go to work, you know, and go, oh, do run through, oh it's just, you know, I, go, I get in my box, well, not so much get in my box car, I go to work now, I get in my box on my, on my laptop, you know, have a Zoom call, I've got a box screen that I'm looking at, then, you know, a box dinner maybe, you know, and all that sort of thing becomes a little bit, oh, a bit the same. So my challenge to people is to go. I found, I found the number, I think. Well, what's the number? Here we go. This is the miracle number, guys. Here we go. Um, Ryan's going to read it out, wait for bait of breath. Here we go. So it's the probability of you existing all comes out to about a one in 2.685 million to the power of 10. So that's 2,685,000, 2, then 10 zeros on the end of that. That's the probability of you being alive. That's men. So that's crazy for me, right? So the fact that we are here talking to podcast, the fact that you are watching or listening to this right now, you are a miracle, my friend. You're an absolute miracle that you're absolutely here. If you think about that, there's things that have had to have aligned for you to be here. Right? You think about that. Think about two people coming together, you know, and having a child. But think about before yeah, that. If think the line. Like if you to be there, it's like something correct. It's like it is a miracle that you're here. I don't know. I, I, I don't know how your parents met Joe, but it, you know, hypothetically, if your mum didn't go to Tesco's to get milk and bump into your dad and exchange mobile numbers, you wouldn't exist. And then if you go, f- there's no mobile numbers. You know what there. I mean? Just hypothetically, hypothetically, or or with their with with their mum, if their mum didn't go to work that day, they wouldn't have crashed their car into your granddad's car, and it, things have to have happened that are beyond human comprehension for you to exist or for anyone to exist. And it's, it's it, it can boggle the mind when when you actually sit down and, and think about it. It's the um, it's like the butterfly effect, isn't it? I love that bit, by the way. Yeah, that, it's an actual like effect in real life as well. But um, like, where the, did we talk about this before where they the, the butterfly beats their wings and something else will happen? Oh, no, it's the time thing, isn't it? Or, yeah, like if if <laughs> if so, like as an example, if we went back in time and squashed a butterfly that butterfly wouldn't get eaten by a an insect that wouldn't get eaten by a a velociraptor that wouldn't turn into i don't know something that starts human civilization you know but you one those chain of events had to have happened at a certain order at a specific time in a certain way to allow for the chain of events to happen after it and if you could if you knock that out of kin Inter or, or cause it any problems then the world as you know it won't exist you may not have been born or you know there's always those so back to the future isn't it yeah yeah I... yes to make i've never seen those films properly but i've seen the oh, family yeah. guy i've seen the family guy parodies and you have to make sure that one person gets with another person to make sure that somebody else exists and it? it works works on this works on the same principle if we think about that for a minute just let's just bring that in a minute so for you and me to be here on this podcast, think of what's been able to happen. You know, if you look back, you know, two people have to meet, you know, mom and dad never had mobile phones, by the way. Um, just to just to coin that in there. Um, interesting you say it's so I'm, trying funny. To, I'm trying to make you sound younger than you are. Oh, thanks, Ryan. You're so kind, Sally. <laughs> yeah, with it, by the way. Um, but you can start to see if you really think about it. So if you're listening or watching, uh Lemon Up your world and you're welcome. Um you know, it's really important um, that, you know, you think about your life and you think about, you know, what it took to get you here. And you're an expression of life, right? Um, because life goes on. You know, we are just, if when you think about what it took to get you here, but also you think about what planet Earth is in the, in the, in the, in the grand scheme of the universe. We're like a microscopic ball of dust running, going around one of the, just one of, one of billions of stars. Um, when you start to think in that capacity, when you think you wake up in the morning, you think, oh, OK, um, you know, if I do make a mistake, OK, you know, or make a mistake at work, 
you know, we tend to look at failure and things like that, that oh, it's fatal, but it's not, okay? Um, you know, you make a mistake, you learn, and, and failure is learning. So what I want this is to like really get you to think about your life and so you can get inspired to go, do you know what, I am, I am an absolute miracle that, that I'm actually here. And yes, things can be really tough for you. Things can be tough for everybody. And there's another thing that I believe, and Ryan, you can challenge me this as well, that I believe that your problems, the things that are put in front of your life are there specifically designed for you, right? So I've got my specific set of problems. Ryan's got his specific problems, but they're there for you to solve. And as you solve them, it's like almost like, I look at it as a little bit of a computer game, like you're solving them to get to that next level. So whatever's in front of you, you, you whatever it is, it's there designed for you specifically because you made certain choices and those choices lead to you know consequences that lead to circumstances um so we we don't usually see so it's certainly built over over a tons and tons and tons and tons of decisions if you can set responsibility for that then that can start to give you empowerment to start to say okay i can't impact my circumstances immediately right now but what i can do to start to do is start to change how the way i perceive things the way i behave the things that i do every day to make that impact and feel inspired doing them and thinking about your life and why you're and, and, the, and how you arrived and how you can think about your life and the short time we're here right because i know ryan keeps going about how old i am and leave. whoa 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 uh, i'm not like that i'm not like that <laughs> no you're not um but i don't mind um when we think about that you know we're not here for that long doesn't matter when you're if you're 18 now you think you've got all the time in the world but it goes so quickly and this is like i used to hear i used to hear people talk like look i've got ages yet i've got ages so it's all those sorts of things that just remember that your life is so precious um and i never used to think that and you go back to episode, episode one where i had really difficult time on mental health i, I won't bother going to it now because i've told some time of that story but go to episode one oh, i'm quite in po podcast episodes now ryan look at that um to be fair that one is quite easy yeah thank you <laughs> thanks I, I love you the way you massage my confidence <laughs> um but yeah so just think about that you know and, and thinking about those types of things is that you know it's just having that you know i'm if you'd ask me then would we be doing this right now no chance right but it's what you make of life um and, and being real with it. um so ryan any any other thoughts on that before we move on um we are gonna have to wrap up are we? yeah mate it's been half an hour i'm pretty you sure it's been half an hour well look at oh, the time man. look at the time but um any 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 final thoughts i think we've deviated very heavily away from what is what is inspiration or what what inspires me but in the grand scheme of things everything that we've spoken about is reason for me to be inspired and, and what what that provides me uh and you, I guess, what what ins what inspires you is is inspiration. But if you hadn't have, hadn't have been part of the moments you have been in your life, it wouldn't be inspiration. It would be cricket. I don't know. It could be anything. You know, same with me. Like if I hadn't have had the upbringing I had, or or the previous experiences that I've had, I wouldn't have the the motivations and the inspirations that I that I do have. It's all consequential to each other. You know. Um, but yeah. What about you? You got any final thoughts? Final thoughts so are to sort of tie all in a segue, I suppose. Tie in a segue, I think that makes sense. But tie it all together um, is just to say inspiration, right? It comes from you. It comes from the things that you do. Yeah, I think that's the that's the one you thing you've got to learn, isn't it? Is that you don't it, it one isn't one size fits all, is it? It's um it's what whatever you know. A lot of people will have similar out, out inputs for it, wouldn't they? As you would say, but that's why people like Gary V and, and 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 other kind of coaches have such a big following is that loads of people have that kind of um, understand that they're in, inspiring, but that doesn't mean that that's what will inspire you. And I think we talked about before about you will take bits like you'll take bits in this podcast, or I like that, I'll take that, and you'll feel inspired by certain things, and you'll take them and you use them. But we're all different. Like Ryan says, you know, Ryan's different from me, Lee's, Ryan, Lee's different from us. So we take the bits that we need to live our best lives. And that's what I want for you. And that's what inspiration is about. So I want you to find out what inspires you. you know, what is it? Get like, I talked right at the beginning about a routine. Start off really small with a routine, the smallest thing you start in the morning. Think about 
that you're a miracle because you are a miracle right think about that and think about what you can bring to this planet why are you here what's the reason what's the thing you're bringing because i believe everybody's got massive value to add in this in this world you just got to find why that is um maybe you're maybe you're a person who wants to like you know help the closest person to them you'd be there to listen to them you know just to listen to them it might be just doing that having a kind word but that is going to by if you serve people if you help people it makes you feel better ryan talked about earlier helping people i want to help people it makes you feel better it it makes life a, a great adventure right um so these are the things that are really important that we think about as we go through go through our lives right and all at the end, what Ryan talked about was the memories. That's what we've got to hold on to, right? Born with nothing, leave with nothing. All we've got is our memories. And who knows? You know, we might, have to, we might wake up in an alternate reality. I've got no idea. Maybe we are plugged into a matrix. Who knows? But what we want to do is if that happens, we wake up. You know what? That was an amazing. That was awesome. Like, we, ah, that was just incredible, right? Whatever. Um, but enjoy the moments. Um, like, I mean, I'm loving this. I mean, I'm really enjoying this podcast. Really enjoying this podcast. I feel, like the com- I feel like the conversation that we've drifted into is one that I could talk about for hours, and we'll probably have to retouch at some point. But yeah, why um, not? Ryan, you can call that one if you want. It would be um, good to get Lee's take on all this kind of stuff as well, because he's quite a an intellectual person. Um, bless him. But yeah, um, we've been Inspiration Nation uh, again. As I mentioned earlier, you can catch us at Listen to In listen t-o-i-n on twitter and instagram joe is at jose noia you type him into your your social media search bars um his face will pop up there'll be links to all his other social medias the website the shop um i'm not as i'm not as pristine as lee is doing these intros and outros but i do my best um but yeah i think that's i think that's us for this week joe you did good ryan you did good don't put yourself I down do, i do my best i do my best but um I think that's all, all that's left to say is uh, three, two, one. Inspiration Nation. We'll catch you guys later. I hope you enjoyed that episode of What Inspires You or Why You Look for Inspiration. I'd love you to check out these other podcast videos right here. I think you'll really enjoy them. And also, don't forget to subscribe. That'll mean a lot to me right here. And don't forget to hit the bell because it will tell you when another video goes live. So, don't forget, until next time, Inspiration Nation, and I'll see you there.